What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode number 11 of Park to Prem here with Nottingham Forest. I almost said Tower or Town then. That's weird, isn't it? We've done almost, well, over 50 episodes at this point of the new Let's Play and still in my head that sentence ends with Tower or Town. It may never not end in Tower or Town in my head. How are we all doing everyone? We're back. Today it is the FA Cup fifth round. We're going to be taking on Fulham. As you can see by the league table in the top right, Things are going pretty blooming well to the point where really, I don't I don't want to say it too soon yet, but promotion's just about secured realistically. Uh, and to be honest, the FA Cup is kind of our, our big distraction right now. Our little, you know, it, the idea in my head is it'd be amazing to win it. Now, can we actually do that? Probably not. There's still plenty of games left to be played. But yes, today's game against Fulham is away from home, but... It is against a rival in the league, which, in my opinion, means it's a game that we should be expected to win, albeit away from home. Since you last here, the January transfer window has wrapped up. I've made some signings for the future, and, uh, well, I very nearly had a deadline day meltdown. That sounds worse than it is, doesn't it? Yes, Wilson Samake, here he is. You, 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 I think you might know this guy, vaguely familiar, perhaps. Um, I had an offer from Stuttgart of £38 million for him. And it came on deadline day. Now, obviously, you can see by the fact he's still, still here, I didn't sell him for that money. And the reason I didn't sell him is because I thought he was, you know, still pretty important to how we play. Now, given the fact that, obviously, it's been the, the month of February has passed, and in fact, he scored seven goals in his last five games, I feel like I've made the right decision in not selling him. But just for the sake of the hypothetical what if, I thought I would show you the players that I uncovered that were kind of... The maybes. So let's talk about them. The first was Federico Perilla. He was transfer listed by uh, Bayern Munich. Bit annoying, actually. They wouldn't accept less than 30 million from me. Then the day after the English transfer window kind of closed, it was the, the Portuguese deadline a day later. And Benfica managed to get him for half the price that they wanted from me. Um, so no, we ended up not signing this guy. I just felt like 34 million was a bit too dear. Didn't feel like enough of an upgrade, particularly when I know Samake's guaranteed goals. The other options that came up were, well, first they Finn Malcolm. And uh, this would have been a transfer that would have been a short-term one. I don't know why it says he's been scouted, because I have scouted him already. I, I, I guess it's because he's moved clubs. Um, but we saw, again, a similar thing, actually. He moved to Ipswich on deadline day. So there, there was lots of movement for strikers on deadline day. But this guy for £1.2 million would have been a bit of a, a short-term option. Sell Samake on for £40 million, pocket the money sign a really good value replacement for just over a million pounds. In the end, I didn't go for Finn Malcolm because he was inconsistent and he hated big matches. There was one final option. I feel like I'm showing you all the prizes that we could have won here. You know, at the end of a game show, I was like, here's what you could have won. Um, the final option was Ryan Parkinson, um, who was available for 32 million. In the end, I decided it was just a bit too much of a risk, even for me. Although he does look really good, um, he was never going to come in and fill Samake's boots. And whilst, you know what, with our current team situation, maybe I could have afforded to get rid of Samake and still have, you know, enough coverage through the likes of Talby, uh, through the likes of Alex Mighton, it just felt like a bit of an unnecessary risk to take to sell him because we didn't have the money, um, or rather we did have the money. You know, it's not like I needed the money desperately and 40 million was going to change everything. Um, ultimately, we're a team that sit with 69 million in the bank, don't say it, <laughs> and 71 million in transfer budgets. So there was really no need, you know, to go out there and spend that money, or rather not spend the money, but recoup the money because we, don't, we can't spend it anyway. We're struggling to spend the money that we have. Why would I need 40 million? But I would love to know your thoughts on that. Would you have sold Samake at that price? Why? Why not? Are any of the players that I just showed, you know, the kind of players that you would have maybe bought in to replace him? I would be interested to know. And, uh, well, let's talk a little bit more about transfers. Why not? Because um, we've got a few deals coming on the ins, everyone. Yes, we've we've signed some players. Let's talk about these. Um, these are all kind of future transfers. So, for example, in the example of Daniel here, he doesn't actually join us for a year and a half. But this is an English regen goalkeeper who was uh, playing at under-19 level who generated in Colombia. Yeah, I, I don't know either. But I thought for the price that we paid, which was less than a million pounds, it was worth a risk. A player we signed for slightly more than a million is Luis Navio. Now, I'm not going to try and say this team's name because I will just get it wrong. But this team always produced good Portuguese regens. Like, if you're sat playing football manager right now, go to this team. Again, not sure how to say their name. So for the sake of all of our ears, I'm not going to say it. They always have good players. Now, this guy... 
17, incredible ability. Incredible current ability, in fact. Bit of a mercenary, not that great. Injury prone, not that great. Inconsistent, not that great. But he was av available for a million pounds. And despite all those negatives in terms of the, the consistency, the injury proneness and the personality, I felt like for a million he's probably worth the punt, even if he's not very tall for a centre-back. But look, he's 17, he's young, he looks immense, capped at Portuguese under 20 level, well done to the scout that found him. And uh, well, we've got a few midfielders as well, so let's talk about these guys. We've got here Jar Jaroslaw Beresvenski, answers on a postcard. Um, he is a Polish centre mid, thank you Legia. We've got a really good relationship with Legia, we're just taking all their best young players. Um, again, slightly inconsistent, but his current ability is good, really good mentals, which I love. Um, you know, great teamwork, work rate, aggression anticipation, bravery, that is what you want from a more ball-winning, I think, midfielder. I don't think I'd ever play him at centre-back just because, I don't know, his heading and jumping reach just a bit lacking, and he's quite just good with the ball at his feet, really. Either way, £1 million paid for him, and 600k paid for Luis Miguel B Bermundes. I, 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 look, we've signed a Mexican. Mexican regens are in right now, everyone. They are the hot trend. Um, lacking a little bit in the technical department, but super, super good mentals, 20 determination, immense physicals. Um, I want to try and up his defensive game, and I feel like if he can up his defensive game, he could be immense. He's only 17 right now. Really good current ability. Um, I'm kind of excited to see what becomes of him. And then one final deal, and this one is more expensive than all the others, um, you may notice. Now, I have gone for Kursak Urk, who is a Turkish right midfielder, but I think he's a striker, everyone. I think he is a striker in disguise, and I've summoned a big transfer here because I really like the look of him. Really, really do. He's only just turned um, 18 earlier on this month, so he's a super young player. He was unhappy at the club. He would requested to leave, was kicking and stomping his feet, and he decided that he'd rather play for the lovely Nottingham Forest, a historical club that, of course, beat Hamburg in a European Cup final way back when. So, Hamburg, another reason to hate us. Um, we've stolen one of their best young players. I say stolen. We, we've given them a lot of money in return, but I don't know. I th This is... This is one of those risky transfers that I think in hindsight will either be genius or an awful decision. But what I would say about him is he's got really good current ability. And even if he didn't really develop, I'm pretty confident I could sell him on for more than 10 million, like in a few years. So it's kind of just an investment, everyone. It's like we've bought stocks. We're going to see if the stocks go up in value or not. But um, I don't know. I feel like training him as a striker, see how he gets on. Really good kind of mentals, to be honest, for his age. Immense physicals in terms of his raw pace. I like him. I mean, I wouldn't. If I, it'd be concerning if I sat here and said, don't like him, spent 9.5 million. That, that, then there would be questions raised. Anyway, since we last year, we've played a whole host of league games, and it's been relatively plain sailing despite some tricky results. Of course, last episode, we dispatched of Swansea. 3-0. Great result, that one. And in the very next game, we took on Stoke. A Stoke team that I promised we were never going to come back for a live come against. Of course, they're doing quite well towards the top of the table, but we beat them 2-1 in this game. Wilson Samake, um, the day before, we declined their transfer offer. Maybe Stuttgart were watching this game. He got a goal for us in the ninth minute. Finley Robertson then with a goal of the season contender doubled our lead just after the hour mark. John Burgess got a goal back for them in the 80th minute, but we held firm at the back. And in the end, we secured the win. The very next game we had against Luton, we beat them 5-2. Very good result. Samake with a hat-trick. And this kind of marked the start of Samake just scoring goals for fun again. He's found his shooting boots, dare I say. So yes, 5-2 win there. Maybe a bit disappointing to concede a couple. We then took on Fulham, who of course we take on today. In this game, we were two goals up. And it ended 2-2. So, uh, yeah, looking for revenge today. Good to see Peter getting in on the goal-scoring action. Damani Grimes has had a bit of a long-term injury as of late. So, as a result, Piotr here, he's come in, he's played really, really well. And he's just continuing to improve everyone. So, I, I feel like he, he is a long-term centre-back option. I want to believe at 19 years old, he's the kind of player that in three years' time will still be at the centre-back kind of heart of our team playing in Europe. That's the dream, isn't it? Anyway, the very next game we had was against West Brom. 3-1 win here, really good result. And we followed it up with a great result against Norwich. And I did contemplate doing this as the episode for today, um, but I didn't. And I, uh, maybe I should have done in hindsight because it finished 3-2, but oh my word, 
The scenes at the end of this game. Uh, they took the lead through Russ Piper on the 28th minute. Before half-time, Wilson Samake grabbed another goal to add to his repertoire. At the break, it was 1-1. It was a hard-fought affair. Norwich, you know, a team who started slowly but have risen up through the ranks. They are knocking on the doors of the automatic promotion spot. So when Andre Silva took the ball into the bottom corner for them with less than 20 minutes left, my heart sank. And as time went on, I threw more and more men forward and eventually it worked. Wilson Tamake scored a really good goal. Um, this came from a really well-worked throw in, a short throw that we got into the box, he scored. And then Matt Smith for us, come if the man, come if the doctor. Yeah, it's like Matt, Matt Smith, you know, the guy, the actor, played play doctor and doctor. Look, he scored a banger out on the right-hand side. Not, not bad for a player who came on off the bench and was signed from Austria last year. We win it 3-2. And, uh, well, you might be wondering, oh, that game, they must have given the players confidence, you know. Great result against Norwich, they're going to win the next game. Didn't didn't work out that way. Um, yeah, we lost 2-1 to Bristol City. Uh, we took the lead in this game. Leighton Stewart had a little bit of a goal-scoring drought. You know, Samake performing, Leighton Stewart just taking on kind of a, a background role in the team. He got a goal for us, but then they scored a free kick. And then before the game was over, Healy... Awful own goal. Can't really explain it. Happened in the 93rd minute. I would have been more upset had it not been for the fact that in the previous game, I'd kind of done the exact same thing to Norwich. Either way, though, what those results mean for the league table is we are pulling away everyone. We currently sit 18 points clear of Stoke, uh, 20 points clear of Norwich, who are now in fourth. Bournemouth with a little bit of daylight between themselves and the teams chasing. Elsewhere, Lincoln continuing to climb everyone. Round, round of applause for Lincoln. You can also see here Brewster and Robertson, both, you know, the top two assisters in the league. Brewster with 15 is nuts, by the way. Piotr is doing well in terms of average ratings, and he's also got lots of yellow cards. Good lad. Um, Adrian Smith, seven player of the matches. When he plays well, he plays really, really well. And, uh, well, unsurprisingly, Samake leading the goal-scoring charts, seven goals in his last five games, has really helped there. Now, today we're playing Fulham in the FA Cup. You can see they are currently down in eighth place, but we did draw against them when we met with them previously. In terms of team news for today's game, if we just take a look at the team, this is how we're going to line up. Um, I did rotate the team quite heavily for the game against Fulham, so I will use that as the excuse as to you know, why we lost to them. Um, it does mean that for today's game, though, we come in fresh as a daisy, you know, ready and raring to go. Full strength team. I don't think there's anyone out. There's no one out. This this is a rarity. No one is injured. No one is out. This is my best 11 on our best day. And hopefully, we're going to be able to go marching on to what I think is the FA Cup sick round the quarterfinals. I'm not sure. I think it is. I would say the quarterfinals. It sounds good, doesn't it? Either way, we've not really had... Like a deep cup run this year in Football Manager in Park to Prem. I say that, obviously. We, we made it far with Lincoln and Boston, I think, on a couple of occasions in the FA Cup. But this, you know, it's the furthest we've been. It's uncharted territory. I don't really want to get to the semi-final because I'll just bottle it at Wembley again. Um, worth noting as well, most of the teams left are Premier League teams. This was a very good t draw for us, all things considering. Hopefully, we're going to put on the performance on the pitch as Piotr heads it away. Only as far as Ben Knight, though. Now with, is that Oliver Burke? We're getting to that weird point in Football Manager where now that we're, I think, seven or eight seasons in, I never know if players, you know, they are regens with the same names as real players or if they're, well, the you know, real players, I suppose. I mean, the, the opposite of a regen, everyone. Whether or not they're real or not, that's what I'm trying to say. Anyway, Duncanson, oh my God, Rogina, Roger. I've just given Roger a new contract, everyone. I've just given Roger... Roger, you literally signed a new contract this week. It's a four-year deal, but if we get promoted, he gets another three years added on to it. And how does he reward me? How does he, you know, treat me for giving him this new deal? He goes and gets blumming sent off. Um, I think I have a plan. Does this work? Is it... Uh, not... not you, sorry. Sh shuffle, everyone. Shuffle. Uh, does that work? Kind, kind of? Um, this is going to be a rough day, isn't it, now? This, this is going to be, it's going to be a tough day, everyone. I've made my peace with the universe. Um, Palembi can't play right wing back, can he? No. Smith can put, um, Smith can't play left to wing back either. I was wondering about playing wing backs instead. Um. Hmm. It's not ideal. I'm going to level with you. Uh, we'll, we'll go with a 3-4-2. But 
we're going to have to change things up a little bit here. Less of working the ball into the box, more direct, much higher tempo. Um, in transition, distribute to centre-backs. You know what? I'm not going to change too much more about how we play. Other than I'm going to drop the line deeper. I'm hoping we can really suck them onto us by dro dropping deeper, encouraging them, them to get higher up the pitch and then just get big balls over the top to the attackers. That's what I'm thinking, although I am just going to change Seca's role to go complete complete forward on attack, everyone. I've not played a complete forward on attack this year. Maybe, maybe today's the day to dust off that role and give it a go. I feel like Seca's not got the pace necessarily to you know break through on goal and do crazy things, but he's got the creativity. He's, he's like a, a circus clown. He can juggle. He can do tricks. You know, he does the unexpected. That, that, that is what he can offer us, I feel like. Anyway, I mean, it's no nil at the break. Imagine if this goes to a, a, a replay. Now, there, there is a little bit of a problem with if this goes to a replay, everyone. Behind the curtain here, um, it's it's currently 10.45 the morning that the video goes up in an hour and qu a quarter. If it goes to a replay, I'm probably going to upload an extra video later today. Probably not going to need to worry about that now. They've taken the lead. Thank you, Duncanson, I think. But yeah, the video that you're watching, this video, it's recorded, if you're watching it as soon as it comes up, recorded two hours ago. It's the morning. I've got my morning voice on. You know the deal by now. Um, so, yeah, if this goes to a replay, I don't know what I do. I didn't I didn't plan for that. So may, maybe this is a blessing. It's not a blessing. I want to win, everyone. I want to win. I'm going to get shouty, shouty. Come on, lads. Someone do something. I feel like as soon as you go a man down, you are at a bit of a disadvantage. I know, that is the insightful insight into football you come through for. If you're down a man, probably more difficult. Also, insightful insight, Jack. That is, you're a wordsmith, aren't you? Right, Damani Grimes, come on down, mate. Damani Grimes, come on down. You know what, Hoover, I'm getting rid of you, mate. I'm sorry. Uh, what am I doing? <laughs> what, what am I doing here? Um, I'm going to put the wing defensive wingers back on defensive wingers. Actually, am I? No. No, I'm not. Hoover, can you play right wing back? Also, pause the game, Jack. Pause the game! You can play right wing back. Right, Orojo left wing back on attack. Hoover, right wing back. Damani Grimes. I don't know if... Damani Grimes probably ain't worth subbing on now that I think about it. Damani, come off. It's a silly decision. Um... Hmm. I mean, I'm going to be honest, everyone. It's not great when you get a sending off like we've had here. Do I go back to the three up top? Do I go? Do I go back to what we know? Maybe play them on attack. What am I doing with Plemby? Plemby's just sat in the middle, thinking, "Boss, what am I doing?" I don't know, mate. I don't, I've not thought that far ahead yet. Um, <laughs> uh, I think I might bring on to Manny Grimes. The other option is Matt, Matt Smith gets goals. You know what? Matt Smith gets goals. Smith, just play box to box midfielder. Robertson, deep line play playmaker. I'm gonna play. I'm gonna look at that asymmetric. We love to see it. Um, it's. I mean, it's a bit of a situation in it, everyone. I'm. I'm gonna level with you. Bit of a bit of a situation. Let's look for the overlaps. But I want to focus. Play down the middle. Play nice and narrow. Get it to the front, men. That's basically what we're doing here. I should probably. Oh my, Smith. Smith, get up, Smith. Is he okay? That was very dramatic, the way it panned over to him. And he's just laying in a heap on the floor. Um, out of possession. Let's start pressing, now that I think about it. And in transition, over defence. Just, just boo it long, basically, Stokes. Have, good luck, have fun. We've got three men forward. We need a goal. Demand more. Come on, lads. Someone do something. Blooming Roger. Blooming, blooming... I Put my faith in him. Give him a new contract. And now Willis, our former player's on the pitch. Not in the thumbnail today, but he's there, everyone. Watch him score against us now. Burke, he's through. What a tackle. Who was that? Thiago. Peter Shack gets it away, too. We need a goal. We need a goal. Very, very attacking. It's difficult when you're chasing a game and you're down a man. It's not, not a simple task, is it? Also, I've definitely said kick long over defence. What are we doing here? What a, boot it! 
Have a go. There we go. That's what we're all about. We're like, we're like the hokey cokey, everyone. It's what we're all about. Duncanson, stop him. Knight, Willis. If he'd scored, I'd just walk away from my computer. There's two minutes left. It's not really working. But there's still time. There's not time. There's not time. Ah. That's annoying, isn't it? That is... That is... I'm not, I'm not happy, lads. <laughs> Furious. Furious. Hmm. Not not ideal, I think. When, when your player gets sent off after 13 minutes, it is an issue. Adrian Smith isn't out for too long, which is fine. Roger X... Roger. My son. I put so much faith in you, but you have got a little naughty streak in you, haven't you? You little rascal. Roger the Rascal. It's not It's not catching on. It, sound, it sounds like I'm talking to a child. Um, maybe I am. He is getting sent off in stupid moments. Either way, I don't know what to say. I was really hoping we were going to win that, but I feel like the sending off completely screwed us. Um, looking a little further to what's to come this year, we've got 10 games left of the season. The way the league is looking, uh, we're probably going to be done relatively soon. Dare I say. I've got this game against Bournemouth, which we might come back for next time. Given the fact they're second, that could be the game that secures our promotion. And then maybe after that Bournemouth game, the episode after that, the end of season one, we do like a huge big recap of everything. You know, if you've got any questions, stuff you want to see, essentially it turns into a isolated end of season episode. Let's talk about the squad, talk about the plans for the Premier League, and let's have a look around at things that have been going on in the universe I actually quite like that idea. So I think that's what we'll do over the next couple of episodes. Um, but yeah, I hope you have enjoyed this one today. Bad result, but... Mm. I mean, let, let me know. Would you have sold Samake? What did you make of the other players that I lined up? Um, what do you make of the new signings as well? Am I mad to be buying in these players? Am I mad to be spending nearly £10 million on one of them? I just think he looks good. I don't know. Maybe, the more I look at it, the more I'm like, maybe I made a mistake here, but... You can let me know your thoughts down below. Either way, folks, that wraps up everything from me today. Wish editing Jack good luck and rendering Jack and uploading Jack. You've got, Jack, you've got 70 minutes to get this video up. So, Godspeed. I'll see you all very soon. Thank you for watching. Back again tomorrow. It is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.